All right, has everybody got their books and got a pencil? No, where's your book? You don't have a book? Can you go get, get your book? Because you're going to need your book tonight because we're going to do a lot in the books. In fact, we're going to spend most of our time in the books. Oh, you haven't? Okay. We are going to do tonight a review of the last five weeks. There you are. I need you to get to page number 38, I believe it is. Page 38. Now you need to follow in your books, guys, because we're going to be doing mostly in the books tonight, because there's, there's a lot of things to cover. And I'm going to try not to bloviate too much and say too much that, you know, I want you to follow along. I want you to fill out what's in your books and follow along with that. We're basically going to do a review of the last five weeks that we've had lessons. Now, I wasn't in here for the first two weeks. Um, I think Brother Franklin might have taught one of them and somebody else taught another one. But what we've been studying the last five weeks is concerning the nature or the attributes or characteristics that make God who He is. Now, you have certain attributes that make you who you are, that make you different. Even if you've got an identical twin, you're still different in some ways. But each one of you, now, you all have a couple of ears and a nose and a mouth and two eyes, but there are some unique features about you that differentiates you from everybody else that's in here. So you have characteristic or character traits that make you who you are. Now, some of you can probably speak Spanish. Some of you can speak English, which I hope that's most of you because I'm speaking to you in English and I'm trusting that you're understanding what I'm saying. Uh, there are some kids in this world that speak Chinese. They speak Japanese or they speak Farsi or they speak French or German, or some other language. But those are characteristic traits of those individuals. But each one of you, and I want you to keep this in mind, you are a special, special creation. God made you special like you are. Now, sometimes we don't like things about us. When I was growing up, I was called Skinny Benny. I was so skinny. I mean, I could wrap my hands around my arms, around my, I was so skinny. In fact, when I was in, in high school, my freshman year of high school, I joined the wrestling team. And I wrestled the 87 pound weight class. I was five foot 11, which is about three inches shorter than what I am now. I didn't weigh 87 pounds, I weighed 76 pounds. The advantage I had over the other kids that were in my wrestling weight was I was almost a foot taller than them. All the other guys that weighed their 70 or 80 pounds, I was that much taller than them. But I imagine when you look at me now, you don't, can't imagine that I was ever that skinny. Of course, a year ago, I weighed about 100 pounds more than I do now. So my weight fluctuates around. But back then, I was just a little skinny thing. I did not like myself. I didn't. I didn't have these big pec muscles and all this stuff and these big arms. I was a skinny little bony kid and I didn't like it. In fact, I got into the comic books and I saw these things in there where the, the, the little skinny guy was on the beach and the big muscular guy came up and kicked sand on him and he went and got this weight thing that he did and he ended up building his muscles up. Well, that never worked for me. It just didn't happen. I was not happy with myself. And there may be some things about yourself that you don't like. You might not like your nose. You might not like your ears. You might wish your eyes were a different color, that your hair was straight instead of curly. All of these things. But God made you a very special individual because He wants to have a relationship with you. Specifically with you. Not as a group that's in this room all together. I'm talking about each one of you individually you're special in God's eyes. And if you would have been the only person that was living on this earth, Jesus still would have come down and died on that cross for you so that you could have forgiveness of your sins. 
but you are. You're a very special individual. So keep that in your mind. You know, a lot of times kids can be mean to each other and they'll start picking on somebody. Well, you're too fat or you're too skinny, or you're too ugly, you're too this, you're too that. And we do that. But remember, you're a special creation. God made you a special creation. And He wants to have a relationship with you. Now, God's character teaches us who we are. The first lesson that we had, God was what? Tell me. Creator. God is creator. Now this will tie in with one of the other things that we have that's, that's down here at the bottom. God is creator. God is the only one that has always been here. Nothing else has ever been here always except for God. Do you realize the angels? They were created. Do you realize that Lucifer, who we call the devil or Satan, he was a created being. There were three archangels. There was Michael, there was Gabriel, and there was Lucifer. And when Lucifer decided to rebel against God, he took his third of the angels with him. But they were created beings. Now, what else is a created being? Wait, a created being? Yeah, what's a created being? Oh. We got a bunch of them in this room. That's it. All of us are created beings. But do you realize that once we're created, we're going to live forever? You will never, ever cease to exist. You will always, forever, throughout eternity, you are going to exist. The question is, where are you going to exist? There's only one of two places that you can exist. Uh, 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 nope, not here. No. That's right, you got them both. You're going to exist in one of two places. And that, one of, that determination of where you're going to exist is dependent on the choice you make here on this earth while you're alive. You only have one or two places that you can choose, but it's a choice that you're going to make and you'll say, well, no, I'm not going to make a choice. Well, by not making a choice, you've made a choice. God is a creator, is the creator. He has always existed and that's part of one of these here which is eternal. Now the next thing we found out about God, God is what? Name of our Bible, the holy. God is holy. God is perfect. He never makes mistakes. He cannot sin. He has never sinned. The next thing, God is not only the creator and one of his other character traits is holy. What else? That's one of them, but what's the next one I want? Just. Just. What's just mean? When we say God is just, you want to give it a try? Um, well, that's true. He isn't God is just. Another way to put it, God is fair. God is fair. He will give us what we deserve. And you thought, boy, that's great. Well, not really. If you're a sinner, you're going to get what you deserve. And that's punishment. But we continue on. Not only is He holy and just, He is also God is, and this used to be bumper stickers you used to see all the time. God is love. He's our creator. He's holy. He's perfect. He's just. He gives us what, us, what we deserve. But He also loves us. He loves us. And because He loves us, He provides a way that we don't have to pay the punishment for our sin, which is death and separation. Death is, is, is not an annihilation. Death is 
a separation. Now, one of these days, you may come to this church and they may be having a funeral. And there'll be a coffin up front there and you may look in there and you'll see this old body in there. My body might be in there, but you realize something? That's not the real me. My soul and my spirit have gone to heaven. I'm up in heaven. My body's still down here. That's because my body is separated from my soul and my spirit. Separated. And that's what death is, separation. Now there's also, besides physical death, which every one of us is going to have to go through one day. The Bible says it appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. Now, you're not thinking that way because, you know, you're young and you probably feel pretty invincible and I've got lots and lots of years ahead of me and lots and lots of time ahead of me. Well, when you start getting up to my age, which I just had a birthday last week, I turned 67. You realize that I'm not that far away from 100. Well, a few more years, but not that far away. Let me, let me talk. So, it goes by quickly, kids. It goes by quickly. I came to this church as a 10-year-old. That first building over there where the nursery's at, that used to be our main church building. I sat in there one night. On a Sunday night, I was bored to death. This is back before Game Boys and this and that and everything else. You just had a piece of paper with a pencil and that's basically what you did. I sat there and I, I wanted to determine how long it was going to be between that time when I was 10 years old till I was going to turn 21. And I was going to sit there and count the number of years and months and weeks and hours or days and hours and minutes and seconds till I turned 21. So I sat there and most of the night, that's all I did. I was figuring, 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 figuring. And it came out, it was millions, millions of seconds between the time I was that age till I was going to turn 21. Well, I turned 21 46 years ago. I've passed 21 up a couple of times since then. The time goes by so, so quickly and it's going to be the same thing with you. Your time is just going to go by. But God loves us. God desires to have a relationship with us, to have fellowship with us. Now the last thing we remember, which was last week, and this kind of goes along with the forever part of God. God is eternal. And I talked about this a little bit when I talked about the angels and the rest of us. We all have a beginning. I don't remember my beginning. That was 67 years ago. My mom and dad didn't even know that I was there, at least for a little while. But you know who did know I was there? One split second I wasn't there and the next split second I was there? God knew it. And that's back in the day when we didn't even know what we were going to have when we had children. Even in when I had my kids. I didn't know if we were going to have a little boy or going to have a little girl. We didn't know whether to paint the room blue or to paint it pink. We didn't know anything about all of that stuff because it was a matter of sitting and waiting and boy, it's a boy or boy, it's a girl. We just found out when it happened. Whereas today, I mean, we can find out about anything and everything we need to know about you before you're born. Let's go through our books now. Let's start on page number 38. And we'll go through some of these things, and this is kind of a little bit of a review, but we're going to do this so that you can, you can have some time to fill out your stuff here and we can finish the books up. Because we've gone through a lot of this stuff already, every one of the five weeks that you hear. But God is creator. This is on page number 38. God is the creator of everything. He created the universe, the earth, and everything on the earth, including humans. He made humans to be in His image and to have a relationship with Him. God wants to have, let me, let me finish, okay, son. God wants to have a relationship with you. And not just his New Testament Baptist Church or the sixth grade class or the middle school class or the high school department or the college age department. He wants to have that relationship with you. How many of you have ever had a really good friend? I mean a good friend. The thing you want to do with that good friend is do what? If you don't see him but once every year, but you get together, what do you want to do? Okay, that's part of it. That is it. You want to spend time with that friend. 
And that's what God wants to do with you. He wants to spend time with you. Now we have different ways of doing that. In the, in the, in the Garden of Eden, of course God would come down in the cool of the day and he spent time communing with Adam and with Eve. That's why when he came down after they had sinned and they were hidden away, he came down to Adam, where are you? He came down to fellowship with them. He knew what they had done. He knew where they were at. They weren't hiding away from him. He knew what bush they were under over there. He knew they had these fig leaves on to cover themselves up because they realized they were naked. He knew all of that, but he desires to have fellowship with us. Now, he communes with us and we commune with him two different ways. He speaks to us through his word. That's why it's so important that you guys develop habits of reading your Bible. That's how God wants to speak to you. He also speaks to us through the preaching. That's why it's important that you spend time in church and in Sunday school and you listen and you pay attention and not goof and do all that stuff. You want to listen because God wants to speak to you through His Word. Now we speak to Him through prayer. And I don't mean now I lay me down to sleep or thanking Him for your food. I mean actual time of talking to Him. How about if you had your best friend show up that you hadn't talked to in a while and you two just sat there in a room and kind of looked at each other? No, you want to talk to each other. You want to share what's inside of you. You want to tell them, oh, this is what happened to me and this is the neat stuff that happened to me and here's some stuff that happened here and here's some stuff here and I've got some stuff planned here and this is what happened when I went out here. You want to share that with your friend and your friend wants to do the same thing. So you have a back and forth between the two of you. You communicate with each other. And that's what God seeks to do with you. He wants to speak to you through His Word, and you need to speak to Him through prayer. Now, we are in God as Creator. What do you do to grow in your relationship with God? That's that empty space there on page number 38. What do you do? What do you think? It's right there in the words above. We grow by doing what? That's listening to His Word. And how else? Praying. Talking to Him. Consider praying, talking to God. You're talking to your Heavenly Father. Now we do reverentially. I mean, we try to be reverent about it. Uh, but that's, that's the two things. Now the next thing, God is holy. That means God is perfect. He's without sin. He always does what is right. He has never done anything wrong. In fact, God can't do anything wrong. His holiness demands perfection. Now since we know from the Bible that everything God does is right, we can compare our choices with God's character to know what is right and wrong. We, we can't be holy because we're born as sinners. When Adam and Eve sinned, that nature that they did passed on down to each one of us. Now. There have been some times when I was asked a question, and for whatever reason, I have no idea why I did it. I mean, the truth wasn't going to hurt me, but for whatever reason, I told a lie. I just told a lie. I remember one time when I was in junior high, my last name is Maudlin, M-A-U-D-L-I-N. Well, there used to be Back in those days, there used to be a cartoonist by the name of Bill Malden, M-A-U-L-D-I-N. I had one of my teachers in seventh grade ask me, is that any relation to you? I said, yeah, he's my uncle. Well, he wasn't my uncle. I didn't know who this guy was, didn't know anything about him. But for whatever reason, I mean, instead of telling the truth, I just told a lie. It's so easy for us to, to do things that are not right. Now, I'm sure every one of you in here is just about as bad as me. You've probably sinned. In fact, I've sinned today. I've had to ask the Lord to forgive me for a few things. And I'm sure every one of you has done the same thing. But we all are naturally sinners. Now, because God is holy, we can't be like Him because we're sinners. But when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, and we become holy in God's sight, and the Holy Spirit helps us to do what is right. Let's go on to the next one. What is a way you might sin? Up at the top of page number 39. What is a way that you might sin? There's a couple of different ways to sin. You can commit a sin or you can neglect to do something. 
So there's sins of omission and sins of commission. You commit a sin or you forget to do something which you actually should do. So there's two different ways there. Now let's go on down to God is just. God is always fair. He is always fair. He must always give people what they deserve. The Bible says that those who sin deserve death and punishment in hell forever. Now, we are all born as sinners, and we all do sinful things. We are all born as sinners because of Adam and Eve. Talked about that a little bit. We deserve the punishment of death and hell for our sins. But without Jesus, there's nothing we can do to be saved from this punishment. Now, guys, keep this in mind. I told you how special you are. Put your hand in my how special you are, and you are a unique individual, and God wants to have a relationship with you. But somewhere in your life, in your lifetime, and you need to do this before you die, you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice. You're either going to realize that you're a sinner and realize that Jesus is the only way that you can have forgiveness of those sins, and you're going to have to accept that, or you're going to reject that. And that's going to determine where you spend your eternity. Remember, we're all going to live forever. We'll all live forever. Once you were conceived, once God knew who you were, when that moment took place, not even your mom and dad knew about that, but he did. And from that point on, you will live forever. Again, it's going to be as far as the place, the destination that you're going to. Now, we saw that God is just. We go on down a little bit further. Who is a sinner? Who's a sinner in this room? Who's a sinner in this room? Yes. Yeah. You're a sinner? Oh my gosh, we got a sinner in this room. Who else have we got? That's right. The Bible tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then the Bible also tells us in Romans chapter 6, what's our punishment for our sins? This. Oh my gosh, you guys are good. You're doing better than the girls tonight. The gift of God is eternal life, but the wages for our sin for what we do, that's death. Again, that's separation. What do we deserve for our sin? Yeah, we do. We deserve that. Who is the only one that can save us from our punishment? Through Jesus Christ. Jesus Himself said, He was specific about it. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Me. He didn't say, I am a way and a truth and a life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So He's the only one. And then we see that God is love. God wants the best for us. He knew that we deserve to be punished for our sins. But because He loved us, He made a way through His Son, Jesus Christ, that we could have forgiveness of sins. Now, our responsibility with that, we just have to place our trust in Jesus Christ, that He died for us, to admit to Him, Lord, I'm a sinner, and ask for His forgiveness and ask Him to come into your heart. Now, when we get something good that we don't deserve, the Bible calls that grace. What did God give us that we don't deserve? Forgiveness. Another one? Eternal life. That's another one. That's good. He gave us those things. We don't even deserve them. And the last thing is, God is eternal. That's the last week that we had. God did not have a beginning. He will not have an end. No one created God. He has always been alive and He will always be alive. But He offers us eternal life as well with Him, to be with Him forever if we choose to trust Jesus as our Savior. All had a beginning. We all began somewhere. We don't remember it, but it did happen because you're here. That's evident that you had a beginning. You will never have an end. You will always exist. What is our hope? The Bible calls what our hope? That God can make us alive because He brought Jesus Christ back from the dead after He died. He'll do the same with us. You see this old body we have, we look at it, and here I am, I've got cuts on my hands and some skin here, and I've got some, some old spots on it and stuff. And 
I've got scars all over me. I got a scar up here where I ran into a countertop when I was a kid chasing a dog that was chasing a cat. They made it, I didn't. Split my forehead open. I've got, I've got scars on fingers and I've got, I got all kinds of problems with things. But you realize one day I'm gonna have a perfect body. And not because of anything I did. It's because of what Jesus did and what he offered me and he's promised me that I'm gonna live forever with him because back when I was 15 years old on October the 31st, 1965, I was in that auditorium right over there and I heard the message from Pastor Joyner and I realized I needed to get saved. And I went forward, I confessed my sins, I believed in Jesus in my heart and accepted him as my savior. Does that mean I was perfect from that point on? No. I've made plenty of mistakes, plenty of big mistakes. I've sinned an awful lot. But you know what? God will forgive me of those sins when I ask him for forgiveness. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for all of our sins. The ones in the past, present, future, he died for those, but he wants us to ask for forgiveness for those. Now, I think that's probably pretty much the end of it other than our hope. And then you've got a number of your memory verses there that I hope you guys are doing. It's important that you memorize scripture. The Bible tells us, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against you. I think that's part of your Bible pledge in there. We hide that word. It's a light unto our path, a lamp unto our path. And having that word in there helps to keep some of those old bad thoughts and bad tendencies that we have. It kind of gets those things and keeps them away. I appreciate you listening to me. I know sometimes you get a little bit bored listening to all this stuff, but it's very important. Guys, just remember one thing. You have a choice to make in your life, and you need to make that choice while you're still alive, because once you're dead, it's not going to matter. So it's important. If you haven't trusted in Christ as your Savior, and you're not quite sure what's going on with that, we're more than glad, any of us adults would be more than glad to take the Bible and show you how you can know for a fact that one day you're gonna have a home in heaven with God, with Jesus. Yes, sir, you keep that hand up there, what you got? Yeah, you're doing a good job there, that's what you do. Is that it? Okay. Yep, you're doing a good job. That's what everybody's supposed to be doing, and I've been. I guess I can leave this with Bob. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you.